What's up, Cal Gang? All right, so we got this problem here. So we got this six kilogram box moving towards the spring and wants to know how much that spring is gonna get compressed. And it wants us to use the uh, work energy theorem. So this might be your first introduction to the work energy theorem. And in that case, you're gonna use it all the time. So you should get really good at it because you can literally solve like every problem for the rest of physics with this equation. So get good at it. Uh, let me teach it to you. So the work energy theorem is the way I have learned it says that work non-conservative is equal to the change in energy. So by this self, uh, it's kind of hard to understand what's going on here. Uh, so we need to expand this, right? So always start by writing this, though. This is very useful. So work non-conservative, right? This would be friction, uh, air resistance, any of that stuff. We are not thinking about that in this equation, right? Basically, we're going to say that there's nothing acting on the system that's taking away energy. So work non-conservative is going to equal to zero. So a change in energy is all of our things that could be acting on the spring, basically. So usually there's things like gravitational work, so, you know, change in height, uh, that changes the potential energy to kinetic energy. Uh, that's not something we have to consider in this equation because it's not a flat surface. Um, change in kinetic energy is something we're going to have to consider, right? Because it starts with an initial kinetic energy, and so that means that we're going to need to use our kinetic energy. So let's try to write that. So first, delta E is change in, kin or change in kinetic energy. That's delta K. And then what else do we have? So uh, we have springs, right? So we have spring potential energy. That's another thing we have to consider. So U sub K. Uh, I don't know, actually, I do a U sub S usually. Okay, delta. So basically, we're here now, right? These are our two forces acting on the spring that are going to change, our two energies that can you know, move around. So let's expand this some more. So U is equal to K final minus K initial. And then u is equal to uh, us final minus us initial. That's the definition of delta k, and delta u is final minus initial. So now let's think about this stuff. So our final kinetic energy, right? Well, what we're thinking is our spring is going to go in with initial velocity, and then when it comes fully compressed, it's going to have no velocity, right? That means that its final kinetic energy is going to be zero because it has no velocity at the end. So this can go away. Kinetic and energy initial. However, it does have initial velocity, so we have to keep that around. So spring final is another thing that we're gonna have because our spring starts at a neutral position, but it gets compressed and it gains energy. So this sticks around, but you spring initial, it's starting at a neutral state, which means there's no potential energy at the beginning. So this is also zero. So then we're just left with the equation, U zero is equal to negative K initial plus U S final, which I'm gonna re rearrange to get K initial is equal to us final. So kind of a roundabout way to get to this point, but it's a really like nice systematic way to make sure you don't forget anything, you don't mix up your sides, you, you know, that's how you go to do it in my opinion. So we get to this equation finally, and let's expand it. So kinetic energy, one half, I'm still on the board, right? Mass, velocity, initial, squared, is equal to one half k x squared. Okay, so the one halves are gonna drop out. We don't need them because they're on both sides. So it's just gonna be mass initial velocity squared is equal to k x squared. So I'm gonna move over here. So basically we're trying to find x squared, right? X is basically that compression distance. So it's gonna be, by dividing the k over, you're gonna get mass velocity initial squared divided by k is equal to x squared. And then we can take the square root just to get x is equal to the square root of mass velocity initial squared over k. So we have all these values, right? We have its mass, we have its velocity, we have its k. Uh, the only one thing is that k is not in the right units, so we're gonna have to change k into newtons per meter. So when I convert over, I like to say we get 75 newtons per centimeter, and we want it in meters, right? So to cancel out that centimeters, we know that there's 100 centimeters per meter, right? So we're gonna multiply it over, the centimeters are gonna drop out, and we're gonna left with 75,000 newtons per meter. So that's our actual value of k that we need to use. We need to make sure that we're all in the same units. I suppose you could change velocity to centimeters per second if you wanted to. Uh, you get the same thing in centimeters, but I like it this way. So we're going to say x is equal to the square root. So we have mass is 6 kilograms, velocity initial 3 squared over k, which is 7500. And then if you plug that in your calculator, which I have done for you, my friend. You're going to get 0 0.085 meters. Because that's how far the spring is going to compress. 
So yeah, not too tricky. Just uh, keep working with this formula. Keep trying your best to understand it because it gets way easier the more you do it. I swear, like you can just like intuit everything now when you uh, use it a couple couple hundred times. But uh, yeah, so that's how you do this kind of problem. Uh, good luck on your physics homework, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. So peace.